I don't see the media clamoring to talk to the people who transitioned when they were younger and ruined their lives because of it and now wish that they could go back to their original gender with the body they originally had. And it's not because those people don't exist because I've met them myself. They're really not that hard to find. I mean, for everyone that you have like this, you're going to have just as many on the other side that regret doing so. Especially since 80 to 95% of all children that are trans when they're kids grow out of it by the time they reach young adulthood if they aren't transitioned physically. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Now you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. And today's Daily Dose of Stupid, we're going to continue talking about the transgender thing. And guys, the media has just lost their mind on the transgender bill here in the state of Alabama. And so I figured it just made sense because they have been acting very stupid on this. And there's just so many examples of it. It really, uh, you, you run out of things to talk about because of, <clears throat> I, here's the thing. When you don't have a good argument, you just have to paint your opponent as the bad guy. And that's what they do. That's their playbook. That's their entire playbook because they know none of this makes sense. They know they can't win the argument on their merits. And so what they have to do is paint everybody else as evil haters because that's the only way they think that they can win the argument. And the truth is they're probably right. The media has just been absolutely garbage at covering this. Let's look at some national media examples. And I want you to pay very close attention to the language in these headlines. NPR, it's hurtful. Trans youth speaks out as Alabama debates banning medical treatment. You're going to see that word a lot, treatment. And you'll know that from the interview that we just had with Dr. Lappert, that treatment is not a correct way to characterize what is going on with trans treatment, as it were. Uh, PBS, trans tr teenagers fear Alabama push to outlaw gender affirming treatment. Okay, so now you not only have treatment, it's gender affirming. In other words, when they say gender affirming, they are assuming that the person actually is the gender they are claiming to be. That's what it means to affirm that when a man dresses like a woman, he actually is a woman and having the surgery to make his body look more like a woman's body. That's just affirming the gender that he already is. The Associated Press, Alabama Senate approves treatment banned for kids, for trans kids. So again, you're saying that they are banning treatment for these kids. And then CBC, the Canada Broadcasting Company, Alabama may soon make this transgender teen's medical treatment illegal. Again, saying that it's the treatment and they're going to make it illegal. Thanks, Canada. Really appreciate you getting all up in our business over that. So, look, here's the thing. We kind of expect this out of the national media. It's really not a surprise, and I guess technically the international media as well, since Canada is even covering this a certain way, and they're specifically covering even Alabama's new law on that. But uh, this is the way that it goes. The national news media is is just going to do this. And the thing is, they really love it because it's such a clickbait thing for them because uh, there are a few other states that kind of go along with this, but perhaps none more so than Alabama that they, uh, those elites on the coast just like to look at us and say, oh, those idiot Neanderthals down there in Alabama, those country fried rubes in the middle of the country, they don't know anything. And they actually, they actually don't understand that men are, women and women are men. Yeah, we're, we're, we're the country fried rubes that don't understand anything. Good job there, national media. But you'll notice that that language is consistent throughout. And the thing is, I'd like to say that that's just the national news media. But the truth is, the local news media really hasn't been any better, at least not on this one issue. So let's go ahead and look at a couple examples of that. This is from Alabama political reporter who has been really just kind of awful I mean, yes, they're always awful, but they've specifically been really awful on this one particular issue. The first one here, House Committee passes bill banning treatment for trans minors. And I also want you to pay attention to the subheading here, too. Uh, Republican Joe Lothorn expressed concern that the bill, if becomes law, could result in more teen suicides. Okay, a couple things here. First of all, again, they're saying that they're banning treatments for trans minors, sort of trying to convince the reader that these are treatments, these are things that are going to be helpful, and the very bad Republicans in Alabama's House and Senate are trying to stop that. 
And then in the subheading here, what's important is he's saying it could result in more teen suicides. Now, we've already looked at the data. There is literally no difference between people who have transitioned and people that have not transitioned. And the suicide rate remains constant regardless. But don't let that get in the way of a good story, right? And yes, there was a, a Republican representative that said this, but that's not providing cover for him. He's an idiot, too, if he believes that. All you have to do is just a little bit of study on this topic and, and how it affects the suicide rate to realize that it doesn't actually affect the suicide rate. The second one here, Alabama Senate votes to ban gender-affirming care for trans minors. Again, the word care sort of incentivize or sort of trying to drum up the idea in the reader's mind that this is a caring thing. This is something that they are doing to try to be compassionate and take care of the trans minors and also saying gender affirming. Again, asserting the premise is true. This is part of the problem is that most Republicans and most conservatives, they tend to go along with the language and affirm the premise and then try to argue against it. That's a mistake. See, what they're doing here is they are assuming that transgenderism is correct. And by saying gender affirming, they're saying, yes, they're just conforming to the gender that they always are. And again, the subheading here is important. The bill would ban puberty blocking and hormone treatments in minors, despite doctors warning such a ban could risk children's lives. Which, which doctors? I, I know that they cite them there in the uh, the article, because I read the article. But the problem with it is, is they don't actually offer any data. They have doctors that say, well, theoretically, maybe banning these treatments could cause a child to be more suicidal. But again, when you look at the data, it does not show that at all. And so just because somebody is a doctor and they make an assertion and have nothing to back it up, that doesn't make them automatically right. The average reader does not think about it that way, though. And Alabama Political Reporter knows this, and that's the reason they write these articles in the way that they do. Let's go ahead and look at even more local coverage that completely botched this thing. And this one from our own hometown paper, the Montgomery Advertiser, our home too. Families youth rally against anti-transgender bills in Alabama. Now, again, they're asserting that the bills are anti-transgender. The bills are not anti-transgender. They don't in any way affect anybody that is transgender over the age of 19. And for the people that are under the age of 19, it's actually aimed at protecting them. And furthermore, it's also trying to, it's not saying that it hates them or that they're less than, it's not saying any of that. All it's saying is they can't get this treatment until they have reached the age of consent. And AL.com, who has just been absolute garbage on this the entire time, transgender Alabama woman to lawmakers considering, again, using the word treatment ban, insinuating that this is treatment that is good and helpful that is being banned. Talk to one of these kids. AL.com, trans Alabama teens to lawmakers, just let us be ourselves. And uh, I think this one's actually my favorite one out of the whole group. Primarily because the whole point of transgenderism is you're asserting that you're not yourself. You're asserting that the, the body that you're in is not yourself. And so you're actually denying who you are. <laughs> so I find that amusing that the line is, just let me be myself. It's like, well, if I did let you be yourself, I would prevent you from trying to alter your appearance to be somebody that you're not. And then finally, uh, again, AL.com, advocates protest Alabama bills to limit trans youth's rights as other states consider similar laws. So again, you have an assertion there that it's the right of trans people that is being limited by this bill. It is their right to get puberty blockers. And, their, and, and so that's, again, they are... You can see it from the onset. You can see the bias very clearly in all of these headlines. These are just a few of the examples that I found. That they are asserting that the trans side of the debate is the correct one, and that comes through in their coverage. But don't worry, guys. These are all completely objective news sources here. They're completely unbiased, and there's, there's nothing in here that would make you suspect that they have an agenda behind it. This is the reason that people do not trust the media is because whenever given the chance, even if it is subtle, I don't really think this is all that subtle, but even when it is subtle, 
They do everything within their power to take sides. That's why we don't trust these people. And even the local news media here in the state of Alabama is just as bad, if not worse, than the national. And remember, a lot of these corporations and, and news media outlets are actually run by people outside the state, so that really shouldn't surprise us, but that's the way that it is. I still think my favorite one, though, is the let us be ourselves. It's like, let me be myself and change everything about myself so that I can be myself. All right, dude. All right. That's how they think about it, though. It really is astounding. The most basic thing about you and you want to check, like, um, it would make no sense to be like, hey, let me chop off my arm and have a robot arm because, you know, that would be me being myself. No, if anything, you'd be less yourself at that point. But anyway, that's how they think about it. I just, I found that headline really funny. But ultimately, the reason that it comes down to this uh, is that this language does matter. And, and it's not just the headlines. I, you know, I read through these articles. They're all bad. They all have that bias throughout the entirety of the article. A good example of this, again, AL.com is the most egregious example of this as normal. They're the CNN of Alabama. So you can see this is from that article that we read earlier, transgender woman to lawmakers considering treatment ban. Talk to one of these kids. So you can see here in this expose, they are considering a bill that would make it a felony to prescribe or provide medications to block or delay puberty and sex hormones to anyone under 19. The bill also bans gender confirmation surgeries. Again, this is the same thing as gender affirming surgeries. They are assuming that the person actually is the gender that they are claiming to be, and that is why they are saying it in this way, gender confirmation surgeries. They're saying that, no, it's just confirming the gender that they already are. And then it says, of course, the pediatrician who leads the program for transgender youth eat way B said surgeries never done on minors in Alabama. Well, it's really neither here nor there because now they're banned anyway, so it doesn't matter. But this is what's so important. The language here does matter because the language is how they change things. The language is how they slowly manipulate people over time into thinking that these behaviors are okay. They workshop these things, they do, uh, you know, different clinics on these things to try to find the right wording that they think will be most acceptable to the average person, and that's how they slowly, over time, change public perception on things. And so the language is important, but they constantly, every single chance they get, they take every single opportunity to try to side with and give credence to the idea that the trans side of the debate is the correct debate, even when they pretend to cover it in an unbiased way. And another thing that I really would like to point out here, it comes from that same article that we were just looking at. Um, and the, the thrust of this article was they interviewed a young, young boy who transitioned into being a girl as much as that can be done. And a resident of Alabama was saying that if this had happened five years ago when he was a minor, that it would have been devastating to him. And so that's where this particular piece starts. So again, this is AL.com. <clears throat> had the ban on transgender therapies proposed by the legislation been in place five years ago, Fuller, this is the, the guy who transitioned into being a girl, said that she would have been devastated. She said she would, again, asserting that she is actually the gender that he claims to be, using the pronoun she, would probably have left the state to receive hormones. Yeah, I was pretty suicidal, but I wasn't dumb, she wrote. I was a woman with a plan and extreme motivation. Nothing would have stopped me from achieving my goal. Now, first of all, that's a heck of a statement that you were suicidal, but you weren't dumb. Now, granted, I'm not trying to rub salt in an open wound or anything like that, but that to me is just an odd statement because I even know people that are suicidal. I have close friends that have had issues with suicidal thoughts and, and came close to, to an attempt once that even said, yeah, it was stupid. And I don't know why I thought that and I don't know why I felt that way. Like, I don't know if this person actually was suicidal or not. I genuinely hope that they were not. 
Now, as high of, of, as we just talked about in the stats earlier in the show, as high a rate of suicides and suicide attempts as transgender people tend to have, it really wouldn't surprise me, but I genuinely hope that that is not the case. However, if it were, most people reflect on that and go, yeah, taking my own life would have been stupid. And again, this is a person that has already transitioned that's like, Hmm, yeah, suicide, that was a perfectly reasonable proposition for me to be in the state that I was in back then. But again, we're supposed to be listening to this person on advice for how we should enact this policy in our state. Apparently, this is someone who we deem emotionally stable enough to give us advice on such things. In fact, like I said, the title of that article is Listen to One of These Kids. But... Another thing that I would point out here is this is basically the equivalent of, well, I'll hold my breath, because this is the thing that usually gets brought up in debates about transgenderism. It's the I'll hold my breath thing. You either do what I say and do what I want, or else I'm going to kill myself. And what astounds me about this is this is the oldest play in the teenage playbook. Now, usually it does not rise the levels of killing yourself, but teenagers are constantly playing this war of attrition with their parents. That's what teenagers do. That's what children do in general, but especially teenagers. They treat every little problem like it's the biggest problem in the world because they're young and dumb and don't know any better. And I say this is someone who did this quite a bit as a teenager. I'm a former teenager myself. But they will proposition their parents and basically threaten them to harm themselves unless you give me what I want, unless you affirm what I believe about myself. First of all, it's ridiculously immature, and it's not a healthy way to have any kind of discussion. When the, the other option is, I'll kill myself if you refuse to agree with me, that's not a person that is operating in good faith. And again, I'm not trying to make light of this. I think this is a very serious issue. And I think that we should do everything we can to prevent suicides amongst trans people. It's just that the studies have shown, the data has shown over and over again, that transitioning them does nothing for that. Just like a regular kid throwing a temper tantrum and saying, I'll hold my breath until you give me what I want. Just like that, you can't give in because it does no good in the long run. It does not prevent these suicides. When you do so, that person is either lying and is not really contemplating killing themselves or if they are, then giving them what they want and giving in and giving them the transition surgery isn't going to do anything to change that anyway. All you're doing is creating even more problems for them in other areas, such as the, the increase in things like heart attack, stroke, cancers, other things that we've talked about earlier on this evening. That's all it does. And if this is the case, if you are, as you said in that clip, in that little excerpt from the article, if you were a woman with a plan and determined and that you were going to do whatever you want, okay, that's fine. Wait till you're 18. That's all the Alabama law says. Well, again, 18 would be my preference. 19. Wait until you're 19 to do it. If you're that determined, if you are that absolutely dead set upon doing that, okay, wait till you're 19. And if you are, we're not going to stop you. That's all this law says. And so it's a really, really crappy argument on that side because, first of all, it's, it's woefully immature. I mean, almost toddler levels of immaturity. And then the second half of that is like, well, I was determined to do it. Uh, okay, then why would you not be determined to do it when you're 19? Just wait. I know the automatic reaction by a kid when you tell them to wait for something is, well, I don't want to. But that's not a good reason not to wait for it. They would say the same thing about drinking or smoking or getting a tattoo or joining the army or, you know, a number of other things that they can do once they turn 18. But the fact that a child is impatient is not a good excuse for giving them whatever they want. It never works out well when that happens. And another thing that I would ask, since we are primarily focused on the media in this Daily Dose of Stupid, because they are acting stupid, the main thing that I would like to ask you is, where are all of AILC.com's exposés and pieces talking about the people that have been harmed by this? Because I've actually met several of them. I've done some work with the Compassion Coalition. I've, I've met some friends that sort of specialize in this area. I noticed that AIL.com didn't, you know, interview one of them. Now, AIL.com interviewed, at least based on the articles I read, at the very least two or three of these transgender individuals and featured them prominently. 
the Associated Press did that once. Uh, NPR has done that before. We also saw Alabama Political Reporter feature one of them prominently. I don't see the media clamoring to talk to the people who transitioned when they were younger and ruined their lives because of it and now wish that they could go back to their original gender with the body they originally had. And it's not because those people don't exist because I've met them myself. They're really not that hard to find. I mean, for everyone that you have like this, you're going to have just as many on the other side that regret doing so. Especially since 80 to 95% of all children that are trans when they're kids grow out of it by the time they reach young adulthood if they aren't transitioned physically. And so because of that, that's also, even though it's less obvious, that's another form of bias. You're not seeing them play the emotional card or trying to get them, hey, listen to this kid who ruined their life by transitioning. AL.com doesn't do that. A Alabama Political Reporter doesn't do that. That is part of the bias. And it's just as underhand as the other part. But the reason that this is so important, the reason that we have to keep our eye on the ball on this is because it does not take long for the media to flip people on things. We've seen how, how quickly it happened with Obergefell. You know, granted, that was a much slower burn, but when it came to homosexuality, it was really about the mid-ish 90s up until the presidency of Barack Obama around 2012 when he started his second term that that really started to become more acceptable. And then, of course, we had the famous Obergefell case. But that's really not that long a time, and a lot of that had to do with the media changing certain things. You had things like people being featured more prominently in sitcoms and in culture, and them changing the language, changing homosexuality to an alternative lifestyle, things like that. Uh, catchy slogans like love wins and painting everything with rainbows as opposed to, you know, talking about AIDS and the other side effects that tend to come with homosexuality. Not always, but occasionally. And they'll do the same thing here because it's all about a political agenda. It's all about destroying the American family. That is the end goal, make no mistake. And they already won on the hill of homosexuality. Now the reason that they're not focused on it that much anymore is because they got a new hill to conquer. And if they can break down gender and gender roles, there is no way for the American family to survive that. You know, the American family can still... It's, it's degraded by and mocked by, but can still remain fairly strong in the wake of, you know, down the street having a, a gay couple living in the house next to them. Like, that, that is a possibility. It makes it a little harder, but ultimately, it's not as big a threat as the transgender thing. If society as a whole no longer acknowledges traditional gender roles at all, it becomes harder to keep that family unit intact. And that's what this is ultimately always been about. People ask me all the time, Caleb, how do you stay in such great shape? Well, let me tell you, it's not easy. The Secret is a steady diet consisting mostly of likes and subscriptions, especially the ones where the person hits the notification bell. That's what actually gives me my superhuman strength. Likes, as it turns out, are very high in protein and iron. Sadly, doesn't do anything for your hair. 